today we're adding 20 minifigures to the Naruto collection as well as a giant Sasuke Susano. As a follow up to my original collection video, I have these shadow boxes that I purchased to put a bunch of minifigures in. First off, I do want to talk about these two that were actually in the collection, but I'm going to be adding them to the shadow box here in this video. You will notice the boxes are empty because I did take the minifigures out already. So here's Haku's little label that shows her addition size. So only 60 were made. Mine's the last one in the lot. And we have Zabuza's over here. Again, we have this addition size plaque that comes with it. So only a certain amount of these are made in the entire world. These were purchased and made by Outside Brick, a custom minifigure distributor. Now, not only are they limited by nature, but the quality and design of them are just so top notch. Now, if we look at Zabuza here, right? If we spin around to the back, look at the paint job on the sword. Nothing that I have in my you know, entire collection is similar to that kind of detail. If you're interested in these type of custom ones, I will link to their website in the description. As for most of the other ones I purchased, I will link below where I got those. So we have Kurenai coming in. I never expected to get a minifigure of her. I mean, I don't even have one of Asuma yet, but hopefully in the near future, one will be created. And then we have an even more unexpected one of Ibiki, the commanding officer of Konoha Torture and Interrogation Force. Great details with the fact that they don't have a secondary head on the back, but instead they have all those scars and markings from when he was tortured himself in the series. I did forget to mention earlier that the shadow box is themed after the Naruto series. So we have Rock Lee when he breaks his gates. I believe it's the third gate is when they turn that different color of skin on there. And an even cooler one that I didn't expect to have is Choji in his butterfly form. Though he doesn't have the butterfly wings, he has that Super Saiyan type hair, the scarf, and also the chakra forming in his right hand. One of my favorite moments in the series, seeing an underdog during the Sasuke Retrieval arc really step up and be able to overcome somebody the way that he did. I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to need another shadow box for this series in the future. Now we're jumping over to Shippuden now. Ido Tensei, a reanimated Minato coming in with that real cloth jacket. And then Kushina in here as well. I love the red hair, the little pin on the front, just perfectly sculpted all around. Another cool minifigure to add to the variety of characters shown in the collection. We're taking it back to some old school Team 7 with Kid Kakashi in here. Got an awesome sword in his hand. And then Obito, we got his goggles sitting on the front of him. So a cool set of three, right, total. So it wouldn't be complete without Rin coming in here as well. So neat to have these three. I'm not even sure what the company's name is that creates these sets, but it's usually about eight to 10 minifigures at a time that they release. And now we have Anbu Kakashi coming in. Now this is actually a custom figure that I just made myself by picking up different body parts from pieces. So I have obviously the head of Kakashi and I use this lower portion body from the Anbu Itachi you see there on the bottom left side and just created this figure. So it's my own doing. You could buy multiple figures and splice them together. The same thing I did here for Zabuza. Him wearing that Joni to Hidden Miss Village flak jacket. We've only ever seen that a few times in the series, but Zabuza is my favorite, so I had to create this one. If you are like me and you're enjoying these unofficial sets of Naruto minifigures, I did pick up this display case off of Etsy from Creative Mini 88. They're just such an awesome shadow box. They come with a panel of glass on the front. I do take it off for when I hang them on the wall, so some of the characters can have some longer accessories poking out the front if they have those. As you can see, this shadow box is complete, but I wanted to showcase the set of the full Akatsuki members. We have them in their cloaks, the robes above, and the alternative forms below. You do have to buy two of each of the minifigures to create kind of a full body version. And then Itachi, uh, Kasame, Zetsu. On the right side, you will also see Yahiko, Conan, and Nagato in their pre-Akatsuki outfits or you know the normal robes that they wear. I did custom make those by buying extra heads and outfits to fit them into. You also have Madara and Obito in the bottom right corner, kind of as placeholders because we will see them in this next shadow box. So many minifigures are missing from this bottom section here. That's where a bunch of Kages are going to be going. I'll actually be building the Kage building for Konoha uh, in a future date. And we'll also showcase those miniatures there. But for now, we'll go ahead and look at this first one, which is the Zetsu clone, the one where it doesn't have obviously the black version attached. I would love to get numerous amounts of these to kind of recreate a scene from the war someday. 
Next up has got to be one of the top five minifigures I've ever seen created so far, which is the reanimated or Ido Tensei version of Madara. You can see the cracks all along his armor, his face, and it also comes with his war fan and the sickle uh, on the side there. So cool weapons. It kind of makes them a little bit too long or stand out too much if you attach them. So I don't think I will be for the shadow box purposes, but if you ever wanted to, you could easily recreate some awesome scenes with those. Then there is the six pass model. We can see all the orbs or the truth seeker orbs in the back. Again, got to be one of the top five, top 10 minifigures I've ever seen created for these sets. And to perfectly pure with him, we have the eight gates guy coming in from outside brick again. Another one of those custom higher end figures. You can see all the amazing decals used throughout his body as well as that cool looking red hair. Another one of my top. This is definitely top five favorite minifigures in the collection. I actually forgot and left one in the shadow box that I should have taken out. This is the Ido Tensei or the reanimated version of Itachi over here. It comes with two heads actually not shown here where it has his Sharingans and also one where it has the Izanagi eye on there. Other than the empty area where the Kage are going on the bottom, we have this empty slot up top here where Sasuke is going to come in. But first we have to look at huge Sasuke Susano coming in here in a minifigure format. This was actually sold out for weeks, I think months. I couldn't find it. And I finally found a place that had one in stock. I snagged it up so quickly so I could showcase this and obviously add it to my collection. Some amazing details and textures. I really can't tell if this is made of plastic or resin. I think it is just a higher quality of plastic from the way I can feel it, but it definitely feels fragile. I don't want to be too dangerous with it as I'm handling it. Those circular notches all around the body are obviously where other pieces are going to key into later. Next up, we have the shoulder armor with a little bit of the arm coming down there, but cool to see that armor sectioned off as well as the flames that they sculpted on there. Here's where the hands will be keying into and obviously we have the other section over here, but I never in my lifetime imagine I'd see something like this, a very larger version of a minifigure that's been created. Here's the little hand, right? So it has that classic minifigure looking hand on here. That is, that's one of the coolest things ever, you know, to have something in this kind of theme. Uh, if you do end up finding or purchasing something like this, be super careful when pushing those in there. Uh, they can snap easily if you put too much force on it. With that in, you'll also see it has a little bit of range of motions where you can move it up and down and also you can swivel the hand. The right hand was sculpted holding the sword. Probably the most controversial part about this piece, the fact that the, it is orange instead of purple or maybe they could have made it a different shade of purple. I am not sure why they went with this orange look to it. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section below if I'm missing something, uh, but not a deal breaker to have it be this kind of color. I would love to see if maybe it could be painted over, but I'm not too worried about it because it still looks awesome overall. Just like the other hand, you have a little bit of swivel so you can move it right to left to adjust it to how you'd like it. And we have the head. How cool does that look? So this actually does have a feature, which I will just tease right there, but showcase more in depth later. But great job all around. I love this one has a bit of shading on there, right? So lighter purple, some darker in the front, more of a bluish tone that bring out some of the textures in the sculpt that they did. Something important to note as well, obviously there's gonna be some wings sculpted for this piece here, and you have to put the wings on last because they're actually so heavy, it would pull the giant minifigure back. So that's why we are doing this that way, but really awesome textures sculpted all throughout. Again, we have some shading of paint. You can see at the top right, that's where the hand normally goes. You can actually see a minifigure hand up there. Uh, so really neat details. The other one over here does have that katana bit that's popping out of the side of the sword piece up there. So you can see again, the hand is holding that there him fully assembled definitely don't go anywhere yet we're gonna go ahead and just get a little bit of angles you can see the sides of him and then we need to look at that head feature the thing that I was talking about before and showcase the Sasuke minifigure some great and awesome accessories and details on there. You have the rope or belt. We have a sword in the back as well that connects to the back of that rope. And you can actually pull the sword out of the sheath on the back. Crazy to have that for something so small. You could also remove the sword if you want to take some depth off of him, which I will do for something we're going to be showcasing later. But the hair sculpt, absolutely incredible how they did that for him. Unfortunately, in order to take advantage of the feature in the Susano head, we do have to remove the belt from the middle of his body, uh, but that's okay because with this is gonna be totally worth it once we set him aside, and then we'll go ahead and show you. 
Yes, in the top of the head, we have two studs on there where Sasuke can fit into. And if that isn't cool enough, the reason we had to remove the belt and the sword is you can put the head back on and have him just sitting and resting inside of there. What an amazing feature to have for this piece here, right? It was already awesome as it is, but then give us the ability to put Sasuke in the head like that even greater. Now, because this Susano is mainly transparent, I do have to see how this glows in the dark. Also, there's an alternative pose we could put Sasuke on the arm. Absolutely incredible. When I finally do my setup for all the minifigures from the Naruto series, I'm going to have to find a way to illuminate him naturally. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Look forward to the Kages and the Hokage building as we do in our next video. I'll see you in the next one. Do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.